Hey everyone, Cursed Deck Builder here, making our way to 10,000 decks. And right now we're looking at Jan Jensen Chaos Crafter Charge Counter Deck. So this deck comes to us from Max H, who says the deck needs improvement in the sense of consistency, thematic, or failing that synergetic, synergistic interaction. And their restrictions are no fast mana, no generic tutors, don't want to fall too much, fall back too much on the combos everyone knows this commander can do. My playgroup encourages proxies, so budget is no object, which is a lot of fun. So let's take a look here. As always, the deck list is inside the video description below, and I highly encourage you to go and take a look at it before watching the rest of the video, or while you watch or listen to the rest of the video, see what you would change, see what sticks out to you, and then maybe you and I will disagree. And if we do, I'd love you to put a comment in the video uh, in the comments below so that we can help make this deck the best it can be. So Jan Jansen is a fun little gnome in Mardu colors, a 3-3 haste that sacrifices an artifact creature for two treasure tokens, and if you sacrifice a non-artifact creature, you get two 1-1 one, one construct creatures. Obviously, you need to tap for these, and you can do one per turn is the idea. And then by doing this, you can just cycle through the two options, creating a board state, or just continuously create treasure tokens or creatures. Though I would say the treasure treasure tokens are much more valuable here. This is kind of a value commander where through an interaction you're gaining advantage. Um, Jen Jansen can be also used as like an artifacts aristocrat setup. Uh, this deck is very similar to a deck I've used with the Friends Forever partners. I do not remember either their Innistrad names or their uh, is it I forget the name of that show. Let's see, friends forever. Yes, I had Sophina and Wernog. And so it'd be Will the Wise and Chief Jim Hopper. Stranger Things, I believe this is from. No, I've never seen that. However, I used a very similar kind of, but I went for a clue deck. And this is a charge deck, a charge counter deck. But they have a lot of similarity where they have artifacts that will that want to be sacrificed or enable others to be sacrificed or create some kind of critical mass. So with that, I think you were looking for a little bit of jank. I'm going to speed through really quickly, I think, a few cards that are missing in a generic build like this. Not generically Jan Jansen, but if you are... If you are in these colors and budget is a, isn't a consideration, Esper Sentinel is a fantastic artifact that will draw you a lot of cards. Smothering Tithe, of course, is fantastic because it creates treasure tokens. After that, the next one that comes to mind is, I'm trying to remember, the new Lotho is a card that works really well here as it creates uh, treasure tokens, and there is a group of cards that are like Reckless Fireweaver that says when artifacts enter the battlefield, you deal one damage. I believe there's a few that uh, when artifacts leave the battlefield, I believe it's Disciple of the Vault. Yep. Whenever a great artifact is put in the graveyard, one per uh, person takes one damage. And I think the other one is Ingenious Artillerist, if I can spell that correctly. There we go. Same thing is whenever one or more artifacts. Now, the red ones deal damage to each opponent, whereas Disciple of the Fault deals damage to one opponent. I think these are pretty free to play in a deck like this as well, but they're also cheap cards, so you don't need to go too far out of your way to play them. And then... Oswald, Oswald Fiddlebender, of course, often finds itself in these kind of decks. Now, 
that's kind of the boring stuff. Uh, something I noticed while looking through this is what I really want to do is repeatedly untap Jan Jansen. I think that's the real fun card. So you have Drum Bellower here, which I can use. Another card, which is not Adventure into the Dungeon. It is Initiative. And it is the White Creature. Where are you? White Plume Adventurer also has the same text of untap one of your creatures on each upkeep. And if you've completed dungeon, untap all of them. It'll also fetch you one of your basics, at least because of the initiative. So that'll be particularly nice. But you can use this to consistently use Jan Jansen in a turn cycle. But the other one I was thinking of was untap, let's say, let's go back and say target. Put it into our colors. What about cards that untap artifacts we control? There is mana value. And I think you're playing a few of these. I didn't see the lactic key, which I'd like you to play, as it does the same thing as manifold key, but with one less ability. And then uh, galvanic key is a little expensive, but it uh, does a similar thing. And I don't know. If you're playing Valactic Servant, you are not. That does it once a turn. Now, the reason is I want that, I want that in here is because when it comes to jank, I think the jankiest thing you can do is use Liquid Metal Torque. And I think there's the other one. Are they both named Liquid Metal? Yes, liquid metal coating and liquid metal door, uh, torque. Both of these will uh, make a permanent into an artifact until end of turn. And I would like you to make Jan Jansen <laughs> into an artifact. Because then you can use all of those untapped cards, like all the keys, not just on your own cards, like on some of these tap effects. I want you to use them on Jan Jansen. That way you can get even more untaps and use the ability more and more. Now, are you playing at four mana the clock? I believe it's a clock. Unwinding clock. Unwinding clock does another similar effect of untapping all of your creatures. It doesn't look like your oh, sorry, art of your artifacts. So with that, I'd like you to be doing that. If you're if you're already untapping things such as uh, Throne of Geth, which I think you should be, um, and I think like Power Count Conduit, all these cards that I uh, Culling Dias that I'd like you to consistently untap. Unwinding Clock also goes into that, and then finally on the same thing, I wonder if there is equipment. Creature is artifact. Let me see. Like silver skin armor. Don't think you're playing this. Because why would you? It's I think it's safe to say it's not a great card. But I would like you to be able to make Jan Jansen into an artifact. I think if you're thinking of janky ideas that synergize, that find the middle ground between uh between the Jan Jansen style and the charge counter style and the artifact play. You can make Jan Jansen into an artifact creature. All of these cards, maybe without silver skin armor, are fine to play without the plan of turning Jan Jansen into an artifact because they're just fine with the rest. Of, the rest of your deck is strong and you'll benefit from it. So I would think about playing that. I think I think that could be a fun direction to go into. Um, in addition, there's definitely a few other ways to make him an artifact, but. Something I'd also like you to think about is, ooh, that was that was a wide net I just threw out. Hold on, black, white, red, white, black. We're gonna go by mana value. Are there any other any of the proliferation cards that are worth playing? Whispers of the Dross is really close because uh, it's just one mana. Uh, Contagion class, yeah, Contagion class, and Grateful Apparition are both really nice as well. Uh, just a few other ways that I'd like you to play this. 
Brumaz Blight of Oreskos seems a little too weak because you have to cast uh, artifact creatures, which you actually have fewer than I'd like. So you can't actually take advantage of that. But that would be neat. Um, okay, it only triggers when a Phyraxian dies. Okay, never mind. Don't play this. <laughs> uh, Filigree Vector you're already playing, which I think you definitely should be because Filigree Vector is a fantastic card. Norn's Choir Master. I wish it was when they tap. So those are the first things that come to mind that I'd like to... I'd like to increase the number of counters you're getting, and I'd like to increase the number of untaps you're getting, and I'd like Jan Jansen to be an artifact so you can take advantage of it. A few other things that I feel like you could benefit from is on the other side of Sacrifices, uh, braids, our new braids, braids of risen nightmare, is particularly cool here because on each turn cycle you can sacrifice one of your extraneous artifacts, and for each opponent who can't, because I'm not even going to talk about whether they will or won't, for the ones who can't, you're going to draw a card, guaranteed. Now some of your opponents might have mana rocks, but for them to lose a mana rock or two life and you getting a card might be difficult depending on the situation they're in. It's not a guaranteed draw, but it's pretty strong. This is, uh, as we often say, a floor to ceiling card where the floor is that everyone has the permanent that you want, that you've sacrificed, and they just sacrifice it. And that floor is a three for one, right? If they're all playing, you know, I don't know, clue tokens or something, perhaps it's not the best because then they're just going to sacrifice the clue tokens. But that's that's a really hard thing to predict, right? There's a high chance that at least one of them doesn't have artifacts, or at least one of your opponents has only artifacts they want to keep. And with that in mind, Braids of Risen Nightmare just, just does so much for you. Now, these have just been inclusions mainly because I was falling off of uh, suggestions for theming and synergetic ideas. Looking at the deck itself and changes I might consider, I would suggest there's a little bit of an inconsistency. If we look at the, where is our curve? If we look at our curve, our curve is very, very high in two mana. I've kind of left this uh, to the middle point because a lot of this makes sense. A lot of the cards you want to play are two mana. And I've suggested a few one mana cards, but it's not gonna change the situation, right? It's just the cards that you want are going to be two mana. There's no way around that. So I don't see that particularly as too much of a problem. What I would like to do, I think, is I would like to increase the amount of card draw that you have. Outside of the suggestions I've already made of like Esper Sentinel, I think this deck could benefit a lot for some more black based draw. I know you're more into red and white than you are in black, but I think just having access to the usual suite of Sign and Blood, Read the Bones, uh, Phyrexian Arena, and is it Black Market? No, I always get this one wrong. Black uh, Connections. Underworld Connections. These four are pretty much the generic go to when you don't want to spend too much money to get. A large, uh, like a good amount of card draw that is repeatable or instantaneous. However, you don't have a budget concern. So I'm going to give you the more powerful version. I'd like you to play Dark Confidant. Your curve enables this very, very well. Keen Duelist, which gives your opponent a card, but it is also an extra card every upkeep. Uh, also, I know you are in three colors, but you play a commander that fixes your mana with treasure tokens. Necropotence is a particularly strong card, and I would absolutely recommend anyone who's never been able to play with Necropotence, if you can proxy it, do so. It is a bit pricey, but Necropotence is a fantastic card. I'm a very big fan of it. After that, a few things that come to mind. Goblin Engineer, Recommission. Yeah, I got the M's. Two M's. Recommission comes to mind as it reanimates a three mana creature or artifact. 
which like as we've seen the majority of your artifacts are less than three mana and the majority of your creatures are under three mana so it gets it gets both of them which i particularly like then after that you're kind of low on interaction you have a few in here with like skull clamp and things like that but i wouldn't mind going with just like a few of the classics sword to plowshares isn't too expensive path to exile and then finally lightning bolt if you want another one after that infernal grasp is pretty good but also at that point i would be considering playing uh our our white gift whose name i can't remember where are you generous gift is also a particularly strong one as it hits any kind of permanent and that art is hilarious how can you even be mad so those are the more generic things that i would add removal and card draw and i'm trying to see the thing is with a deck like this it's kind of tricky you are playing the talismans are you playing the signets arcane signets here ah uh, pented prism like you're kind of playing into them i don't really usually i would say you're in three colors you're in three colors and your uh, commander cares about artifacts, I want you to play all three of your signets, which are Boros Signet, Orzhov Signet, and Rakdos Signet. But you are playing a lot of two mana artifacts. I'm hesitating to tell you to play more, but you know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say do it. I'm gonna say play these three in addition to the talismans you have. Uh, you you're also missing Talisman of Hierarchy, which I'll show here, just as another one. This is the black-white one. Um, and what I do is I'd reduce lands. Your curve is pretty low. You could go down to like 30, I'm gonna say 32, 33 lands. You have a lot of ramp, astral cornuco cornucopia, excuse me. Uh, and I believe, Oh, you're not playing the other one. No, yeah, there it is. Everflowing Chalice. Like, the, you have a lot of ramp. I think you can get away with playing less lands without having too much of a problem. I don't know, I think, which ones I would particularly cut because you have a really good collection. Especially ones like Tendo Ice Bridge, which are on curve, on curve, sorry, on theme. It's kind of tough, especially the artifact lands, but. Hmm. I think I would maybe cut the check lands and if well, like a basic each. I have a hard time with the tapped artifact lands because I feel like it's such a such a tempo loss. And even with indestructibility, they're very, very fragile as your land source. So I don't like them. I don't want to say like even if they're on theme, I want to say especially when they're on theme, because when your opponents start play, when you're, you know, when you start playing against a group and you bring your artifact deck, they're going to start bringing cards that are good against your artifact deck. And what's notable is, especially with Jan Jansen, uh, destruction effects aren't very good because Jan Jansen can just respond and sacrifice the cards. So it's more that they'd probably be willing to take down, uh, use kind of a stony silence style, style effect to lock those artifacts from tapping. And like, yeah, you'll still get the one ones out of that, but the treasure tokens are now useless. And once again, I think that's the main strength of Jan Jansen. So with that in mind, you'd be losing a lot. And those artifact lands are particularly weak to stony silence effects because then they just stop being lands. They are just zero mana artifacts what's that zero mana artifact uh, dark steel relic yeah dark steel they just become dark steel relic which is a pretty bad floor for these cards now would i would i be suggesting taking them out if you had 
30, like 34 lands already? Probably not. I think they're fine then. But you have a really good collection. I think Path of Ancestry could be one of the ones to go. I think Isolated Chapel and Dark uh, Dragon Skull Summit. Like you have fetches and shocks. So I feel like you're very much already ahead on having a very clean mana base. So the check lands can kind of go. It's just it's just kind of hard to eyeball because because the mana base is very well built. Okay, so I think those are mostly my suggestions to kind of put it together once again. I think you could play some good stuff like Esper Sentinel or Smothering Tide. Uh, you should be playing a little more card draw, such as Read the Bones, Dark Confidant, Frexen Arena, Necroponents, those kinds of cards. I think you should be playing some more removal with Path, Swords to uh, Plowshares, Lightning Bolt, Infernal Grasp, Generous Gift style cards. And then after that, uh, I think you should be... It would be fun to have a way to make Jan Jansen an artifact and keep untapping them. I think that would be really cute. Unwinding Clock feels really, really strong in this deck. Uh, do I want to suggest cuts? I feel like I've included a lot of inclusions and I haven't said a lot of cuts. Okay, I'll very quickly go over some cuts and then we'll probably call that there. I think Brilliant Restoration feels really greedy. It's seven mana in a deck that otherwise has such a nice curve. It has a very, very high payoff and it is very castable because of your commander. However, I don't think you have a really good way to put enough art. Like this is a card where you want to empty your deck into your graveyard first and then cast this instead of buying back cards like Icar Wellspring. Excuse me, um, Icar Wellspring. Similarly, um, Yogmoth Thran Physician feels weird here. I think he's here for the minus one, minus one counter, but I guess I guess he can use the one ones that come out of Jan Jansen, but once again, you kind of want treasure tokens primarily, so I don't love that. Stormclaw Rager feels weird. I get that it's card draw, but one mana each time. Uh, and I believe it's a sorcery speed too. Yeah. This is this is clunky. This is I don't think I don't really like this. I think I'd rather just something that triggers every turn, like Dark Confidant or Phyrexian Arena. Or if I want to draw cards, I just want to cast Read the Bones and draw some cards. I don't want to cast this and then start slowly putting mana into it. In fact, if you want this kind of effect where you're paying mana, I would just say to play Greed. Because Greed has a much higher ceiling. It does only take black mana, but it lets you draw a lot more cards. And you can use it at instant speed as opposed to sorcery speed. Let's see. Ornithopter of Paradise sticks out as a weird mana rock here because you already have the ability to play a lot of mana rocks. I get you can sacrifice it for two treasures, and it is pretty cute to tap it for, let's say, you tap it for a white, you sacrifice it, get two treasures, tap those for your other two colors. Like, that's cute, but that seems like a lot of work. Uh, whereas instead, I think I'd just like you to play the Signet. Uh, Loyal Apprentice is nice that it generates. I really like Loyal Apprentice, so I like it here. Uh, I don't have much else to say. Goblin Engineer is great. Core Tapper is obviously on theme. And the Duretis are also fine. Deadly Dispute is really strange. I get that it's a treasure enabler, but I think you can just do better. You don't... <sighs> You don't want to sacrifice your... Oh, it, it also sacrifices artifacts. I forgot about that. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Then a lot of the other cards I might suggest to cut are charge counter cards, and I don't want to do that. I want you to decide if you want to cut a few. What I'm going to leave you on as a thought is I want you to compare the charge counter effects of Magistrate Scepter to Golem Foundry. These are two cards of the same mana, and they do radically different things, and they have radically different uh, <laughs> uh, payoffs. One gives you three threes, and the other one wins you the game. So <laughs> with that in mind, I want you to think about maybe cutting a few of these. Some of these are just stronger than others. Like, like Talon of Pain, 
versus Lux Cannon, right? I just I just want you to look through them and find the ones you like the most and consider cutting a few of them because it might even out the power level and it'll give you room to put in some of the additions I've suggested. All right. I hope this has been helpful. I'd love to see another draft of this deck. I really like this deck. I like the direction you've gone in with charge counters. There's a very high ceiling for this deck, depending on how you want to play the charge counters. If you're just going to do it like this and play every single charge counter card that is somewhat playable, uh, it's gonna the power level is going to be a bit lower. But if you're going to be a little more specific and run the ones that are the strongest, I think you will have a much stronger deck. That's up to you. As I've said before, the goal is not always the strongest deck you can make. The goal is a deck that you enjoy playing that plays well with the group you're playing with. You should be having fun. Other people should have fun too, but that's kind of secondary to me, to you having fun. And I find the fun comes from your deck being successful at doing what you want it to do. And sometimes a high power deck is not what you want it to do. So depending on the power level you want to tune this to, I think you'll find a lot of success. I think the commander's strong, the theme is strong, charge counters are fun, and there's quite a birth of, you know, how strong it can be versus how, I don't want to say medium, how average power level it could be. Like there's a big wide space for this deck to play in. So with a lot of tuning, you can get it to be exactly what you want it to be. So with that in mind, if you have another draft that's closer to what you want it to do, I'd love to see it. Uh, if you have any other decks, if anyone has any other decks for me to look at, please remember the form is in the video description below. And please remember to like, comment, subscribe, do the YouTube thing. It helps our channel, and I appreciate any help towards our channel. Well, thank you very much, and good luck with the deck.